All right, everybody, I am back. My name is Heroic Nerd, and today we'll be finishing off uh, what is the Tales of Evil Atlas Comics series. Uh, this time, it's featuring a creature, the Man Monster. Um, and this is a little bit weird. I'm going to show you guys right now. Look at this. My laser gun, it didn't kill him. Instead, he's changing. Changing into what? He's changing into the Man Monster, but this character right over here looks like some kind of weird superhero science fiction something epic origin story is he man or monster so <clears throat> as is the theme with a lot of these books it looks like they're trying to turn tales of evil into a superhero story so i'm still gonna read it i'm a little bit disappointed but because the other two were really good but who knows? Maybe it. Maybe this is good. Maybe it's nice and dark and scary and chilling and suspenseful like the other ones were. Who knows? In Southern California, that's where I'm from, former Olympic swimming champion Paul Sanders is entertaining two beautifully bikinied women, Lib Magazine reporters. Unaware that he has a date with destiny, a date that will transform the spirited all-American hero into a hideous creature mankind will call the Man Monster. So he just looks a lot like the creature from the Black Lagoon. <clears throat> he is a swimmer, so that makes sense. Look and admire, chicks. Some shape for a dude who's been out of training for years, don't you think? But you'd better start shooting the pictures. Even I can't hold this Charles Atlas pose forever. We're after a story, Paul, not a photo spread for Playgirl. Muscle men put us to sleep. So how about something exciting? We're all aware of your reputation as a party goer. We want a different story. One more relevant. Have it your way, honey. How about we go for a drink and some soft, lit, romantic look? We didn't ask for this assignment, but since we're stuck with it, <laughs> that's... She's telling it like it is, buddy. Okay, I read you loud and clear. Strictly business. And speaking of business, how about a tour of my old man's oil well? Come on, we'll cruise out to it in my yacht. Maybe there's an angle for you there. My old man's got the money and I've got the medals. Li the story of my life. Two good-looking chicks and they couldn't care less about me. It's Big Daddy's cash they're digging on. Tell us about your father, Paul. Is he really as tough as they say? Tough enough to make millions in the oil business, and to treat his only son like one of his common drillers. I don't feel bad for this guy. I'm not feeling sympathetic. You're not going to make me feel sympathetic for this man. Hey, look, Jake. Junior's taking another joyride. Ain't that the salt in the ocean? He lays on his fanny and gets all the broads while we work our butts off to keep him living in high style. Ten'll get you one, Mr. Olympic shows him one of his fancy dives. Well, I don't know. Ten, ten will get you one, Mr. Olympic shows him one of his fancy dives. What the fuck is that? Is that some kind of like 70s jargon? Then swims out to the platform in record time just to get him squirming in their bikinis. Tell you what, girls. I'll give you something to write about besides my old man. Take a look at this Olympic form that made me a champ. <clears throat> what did I tell you? Here he comes, swimming away like Flipper. Uh, lay off, man. Let him do his thing. He's got work to do. Guess I'd better take a couple of shots, Liz. We'll have to go back with something. With what? A story about a washed-up swimmer who still thinks he's God's gift to women? Face it, Paul Sanders is yesterday's news. Getting winded. Too much booze last night. <laughs> so he is a loser. He's old and a loser. But I have to make the rig. I have to prove I'm still up to it. But as, okay, here it comes. Here comes the incident, the inciting incident. But as a bone-weary Paul Sanders nears his objective, the drill bit strikes some inexplicable cavity in the ocean floor, unleashing a hitherto undiscovered bacterial force, activating the algae on the ocean surface and causing it to explode in a tidal wave of gigantic proportions. Look, that wave's heading straight towards him. Watch out! It's no use. He can't hear us. He thinks we're waving. And indeed, Paul Sanderson fails to heed their f frantic warning until it's too late. Far too late. That wave, it came out of nowhere, and I can't get away in time. I've had it. Okay, so... 
what the f- I mean I'm confused a little bit I'm a little bit confused okay so a bone weary Paul Sanders nears his objective the drill bit strikes some inexplicable cavity in the ocean floor unleashing a hitherto undiscovered bacterial force Activating the algae on the ocean's surface and causing it to explode into a tidal wave of gigantic proportions. Is that how anything works? Whatever. He's infected by weird alien algae. Ever so swiftly, the wave builds in heightened intensity, catching the startled swimmer in a boiling vortex of bacteria, spawned foam and raging seawater. Pulling him helplessly beneath the sea towards what seems certain death. Deeper and deeper, he plunges towed helplessly towards the ocean floor by a mysterious force no man could explain until with his lungs bursting for a single gasp of life giving air his mind goes blank and he is enveloped by the blackness of unconsciousness and choked by the fatal grip of impending doom oh my god that's so funny it would be great if he just died right now and that was the end of the story he died trying to impress girls because he's an old man But fate works in strange ways, and on this particular day, she does not choose to take Paul Sanders' life. Thank heavens, he came back to the surface in a hurry, and we were able to pull him out. Keep giving him mouth to mouth, I've almost got the boat back to the marina. Okay, within a few seconds, the yacht is safely docked at the first signs of life slowly returning to the nearly drowned swimmer. He's moving his head, we'd better call an ambulance, no telling how badly he's been hurt. How do you feel? We thought you were a goner. I went in after you, then gave you resuscitation while Liz brought the yacht in. I'm not sure what happened. It all came so fast. I feel so weak, so groggy. My god, my hand is growing scales. What in heaven's name is going on? I don't fucking know. You've lost me. But unbelievable as it seems, there is no uh, gag, no joke, only the grim reality, as once was a human, now writhes in agony, transforming into a grotesque freak of nature, hideous creature, half man, half monster, a man monster. He's the creature from the Black Lagoon. That's all it is. He's not man monster. He's the creature from the Black Lagoon. That's it. Listen, you've got us wrong. We want to help you. I swear we do. Help him. My afro, he's freaked out if anybody needs help, it's us! Yeah, I gotta admit, lady. (laughs) Oh shit, he just collapses. Am I losing my mind? Is this really happening? What do we do? We'll cool it, sister, that's what we'll do. This may be the biggest story of all time. Sure it is, but what about him? He needs a doctor. Let me ask the deckhand. Don't ask that joker or anything. If this story is as big as I think it is, we don't want to let anybody in on it. Oh man. Okay, so they're going to use him for attention, okay? But if I feel like we should notify the police or a hospital. Wrong, sister. They'd have every reporter in the country down here. Hey, you girls need help? Is Mr. Sanders sick or something? Negative. He's just got a little chill. We'll get him to a doctor. That was close. We've got to keep this quiet until we find out what, what it's all about. We'll just cover him and try to get him back to our hotel room. Then we'll phone... In the story. After a short drive into Santa Monica, they arrive at their temporary living quarters. Nice going, Dusty. That dummy doorman was so busy looking at what's in your bikini, he didn't even notice me bringing Sanders inside. Oh my god. This is such a stupid idea. Oh my god. So far, so good. We'll get him in the shower while I answer the phone. Yes, Operator, I'd like to speak with Paul Sanders Sr. Oh, he's come to Liz and he's turned on the hot water. Full blast. And while Liz Goodson and Dusty Barker watch in disbelief, the streaming shower once more begins a startling transformation as the monster screams in agony. And now he's human again. Get him to the couch, quick. He looks like he's going to croak. Okay, later as the San- as Delirious Sanders lies in the living- I don't care. This is- this is a lot of dialogue. I don't need all this. We can't reach his father and he's burning up with fever. We- I must get a doctor. I must do my best to find one who can keep his mouth shut. You stick with him, but if there's any danger, make a quick split. Dig what I mean? Whatever. I read you, but hurry up. We can't let him kick off, not without first finding out what this is all about. This story is too big. He feels like he's cooling off. 
Da -da 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 -da. I'm a light sleeper, so I'm sure to hear him if he starts playing Monster Movie again. But with the room darkened and the window open, anything can happen. And in this instance, it does. What the fuck is that? It's another monster. So, old friend, I found you at last, and this time you won't escape me. Let me down before, but I don't. But I know now it will be different. You're not double cross Hellblazer again. Listen, I don't know why you're here or why the costume, but I don't want any part of you. Ah, you recognize me. Good, but I fear you'll have to be more cooperative. With you, no way. Now get out of here. Fool! Listen to me. I have a plan. My father, go ahead, but make it good. I'll do better than that. I'll make it perfect. And with your aid, we can bankrupt your father and become rich ourselves. No, I want revenge, all right, but I won't team up with you. Now buzz off before I call the law. <sighs> I don't know. This, this isn't getting me, man. This is not getting me at all. You threaten me with police? You're a fool, Sanders. You've always been, ever since you refused to throw that uh, race in the Olympics. But all that's behind us now. Since you will not side with me, I can't risk you siding against me. Farewell, Paul, Sa Paul Sanders. You die as you lived as an idiot. Okay? Then he turns into the monster. That laser blast should have fried you to a crisp. And said you're turning into some kind of amphibian. Alright? And then they fight. Boom. He punches him straight into the wall. I don't know what's happening to you, but somehow now you're more than a match for me. But just listen... Whatever it is you've pulled off and makes you look that way and gives you such strength, it will work to our advantage. Team up with me and we'll take your old man for everything he's got. What do you say? And then what is he going to do? Okay, so he, he flies? This guy fucking flies? But that's another story, fish face. Maybe I'll tell you about it someday before I finish you off. And believe me, I will destroy you next time we tangle. But the threats fall upon a creature incapable of understanding. Meanwhile, nearby, a building still aflame warm, warms hard reptilian skin, urging the man-monster to return to the source of the sensation-pleasing heat. Okay, he, he likes fire? So painfully, the memory of a girl wells within amphibian brain cells, a girl who went into the bedroom. A girl who left him whom for some incomparable... Com this fucking story sucks. Danger. All about me, yet for some force compels me to stay. Okay? So he bursts through and saves the girl. He leaves the girl with the police. What's going on here? I'm Paul Sanderson Sr. And that's my hotel. Where's the fire department? Stay back, sir. We've got an injured woman here and some kind of stuntman or something in a Halloween suit. Cut the bull. My hotel is burning down. Don't you know who I am? I'll call the governor. I'll have you thrown off the force. Look at my building. If the firemen don't arrive soon, it will all go up in flames. Okay. That man with the glasses ordering the others. Why does he look so familiar? He won't surrender. What are you waiting for? I demand that you open fire. Destroy that nut before he harms someone else. You heard him. Shoot to kill. To be continued in the first exciting issue of Man Monster. So that's why they did this. They did this because it was like they wanted to end the Tales of Evil series. And they wanted to switch it over to the Man Monster series. But Tales of Evil was fucking good. And Man Monster is fucking stupid. So that was a dumb idea, Atlas. Of all the stupid ideas. That, that was stupid. But there is one saving grace here. We have another bog monster story. We get a continuation of his last appearance. So, at least I'm happy about that. God, I wish I had some water. Anyway, this is a good way to cap off the Halloween season. At least that. Mount Palomar, a working tribute to man's curious nature. Its huge telescopes scan the heavens searching for intelligent life. But could it be their lenses are trained in the wrong direction? For an intelligent being stands at the base of a great observatory. That huge domed structure on the mountaintop. I have seen nothing like it since coming to the surface world. I wonder what purpose it serves. There seems to be some sort of scientific equipment within. The masters who sent me on this mission from beneath the Earth's surface will be interested in my find. The Bog Beast. 
Vampire killer still at large. Are they talking about the bog beast or is there an actual vampire here somewhere? For if I am correct, this cylinder pointing skyward is an optical device. But what could the humans be studying? I will investigate further. But the bog beast's elation is short-lived. God, look at that. That is cool. He looks fucking great. It's a great design. What is this? These humans are all dead. Only a creature gone berserk would commit such grotesque murders. Vampire. When I volunteered for this mission, I realized there was danger involved. But I had never imagined it would be anything like this. The last thing I want is to be found in the midst of all this carnage, for the humans will assume I am the murderer, and even if I could speak with them, they would not believe me. None of the lines are down! Then why hasn't anyone able to, been able to reach Palomar by phone? My god, Mike, it's like a butcher shop in there! They've all been torn to shreds! And through the next day, Bog Beast flees the scene of devastation. I am a scientist, an explorer, but here on the surface world, I've been reduced to a fugitive. The masters will be astonished by the irrationality of these creatures. What is this, a female in the same garb as those I found dead at the mountain laboratory? No, she is breathing. This one is lucky enough to have escaped. She awakens. This is a good sign. Oh man. I must bring her to the city where she can receive medical attention, and when recovered, perhaps she can reveal who the true murderer is. No, do not. You will ruin everything. Oh shit, he's covering her mouth? I regret having to do that, but I had no choice. I just hope I have not harmed her. The day is ending. I must find a safe place to rest. There are probably many men searching for me now. And then on top of a hill, from this vantage point, I will be able to spot my pursuers. It is strange that vision of murder is still vivid in my mind. I wonder if I will ever be able to erase it from my thoughts. What kind of maniac could kill so brutally? He must be a being without a soul. There is no other explanation. The green earth, the vast expanses, the bright skies, it is all so inspiring. How could anything so horrible happen on such a beautiful world? Oh shit! But... Is it such a beautiful world? What was that? And where's the girl? Oh my god, it's her! She's the fucking vampire. But the bog beast doesn't have to look far- Oh fuck, no, not the bog beast, he's a cool guy! How could this be? The beast in the same... Gar the same- Oh, the same garb as the female. And she's attacking me! It is as if she is two different beings. The blood-stained clothes, the vicious abandoned on her assault. She must be the murderer. That look in her eyes. There's a girl trapped inside that animal's body. Still, I must defend myself. With brutal purpose, the subwolf claws at the bog beast's compacted skin. Have to keep her away. Try not to harm her. But in the frenzy of battle, it is the attacker who makes the fatal move. She went off the cliff? Oh, fuck, and a few moments later, saying uh, Bloodhound senses something even more sinister than the crushing remains of a young girl. Oh my god, would you look at that poor thing? If we could just find him, we've got the equipment to stop him. Or at least capture the monster. Dude, fucking shit, she is all fucked up. Bones and blood everywhere. Hey there, hold it! As the police prepare an offensive, the shell-shocked bog beast stares into the night. Why must this happen? I wanted only to communicate with these people, to share our knowledge with them. He won't come down. Aim low, try to knock the rocks out from under him. Look, it's the Bog Beast, the creature that demolished Worldly Pictures. Yeah, but over at Worldly, he didn't rip anybody's head open. It is as I feared. They assume I am guilty of this repulsive slaughter. Come on, men, let's blast the freak. They attacked out of sheer terror. I must go from this place immediately. Well, they can't kill him. He's bulletproof. Grab him. Don't let him get away. I'm trying, but he's too powerful. I cannot blame them. The sight of these butchered bodies would scare any sane man. But while I do not wish them harm, I must halt their unjustified assault. Oh, fuck. Look at that. The entire car just lifted. The dude's a badass. I like the bog beast. They traveled in this vehicle. If I destroy it, they cannot give chase. 
and with the strength born from eons of living under the potent gravity of Earth's core, the tar-bred terror tackles the two-ton automobile with ease. Oh my god, beautiful alliteration. The tar-bred terror tackles the two-ton automobile with ease. Mwah! Beautiful way to end this fucking series. I have failed. Fire from the police pistols has chewed away the very ground on which the bog beast stands. And there is little he can do to save himself from his dismal fate. Holy mother, he's still alive. Throw the nets fast before he recovers. We've got him now. Tie him down, Barney. Get the tranquilizer gun. I am weak from the fall, and there are too many of them. But I must break free or they will kill me. Pull the ropes. Pull them tight. They want to trap me like an animal. Good work, boys. He's out cold. Now that we've caught him, what do we do with him? That's not for us to decide. We just have to bring him in. Well, the sooner we get rid of him, the better. Anything that can kill like that gives me the creeps. He came to explore the surface world. He came to study man. But now, he is prisoner. The bog beast alone. Friendless. Doomed. To be continued, never. And then whoever put that never down there understands my pain. Because this is good. This is good. Fuck the man monster. It's all about the bog beast. Why should the man monster take over the fucking comic book when the bog beast is such a better character? Let that be a lesson to you guys. Superheroes ain't everything. It's the big three. Science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Oh my god. Don't forget those. Write comics about them. Produce comics about them. They're good stuff. You know, you never know what you're going to find. But with superheroes, you almost always know what you're going to find. But anyway, that's it for this one. That's the end of Atlas's Scary Comics. At this point, there's only a few more titles that we need to get through. And then the Atlas Comics playlist will be completed. So, that's it for this one. I hope you found it scary or chilling or at least suspenseful. I wish you a happy Halloween. I won't be seeing you again until November. So... If you liked reading this comic with me and you want to read more comics with me, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and donate to my Patreon so I can do bigger projects. Until next time, nerds, stay heroic.